On our third deep dive tonight, which is actually the main event fight for this episode, uh, we're going to hear from team captain of Bloodsport, Justin Marple, about the new and improved Bloodsport. Hey, Tail of the Tape. Thanks so much for having us on. I'm a big fan of the show. Um, I'm Justin, and I'm very excited to talk to you about the new version of Bloodsport, so let's get into it. Um, so Bloodsport's a very different bot this year. Um, we really took everything we learned from the first season of BattleBots and tried to redesign um, from the ground up. And um, yeah, there's three key areas we focused on this, this season. We focused on the chassis design, we focused on the self-writing mechanism, and then we focused on the weapon system. Um, so Starting with the chassis chassis design, um, here I actually have a Bloodsport V1 uh, prototype chassis, and there's some good things to say about this. Um, there is there's no obvious weak points anywhere; it's all well protected. Um, there's no edges for someone like Tombstone to catch, um, but there is some things to be desired here. So, uh, if the weapon were to ever die with a design like this, there's no way to really push someone around. Um, we can't really control the match after that point. We're just kind of done. Um, a second point is because if someone gets under us and lifts the chassis up, since the wheels are inside the chassis, it's very easy for us to lose traction altogether. And then the other bot can just push us around and, you know, where's along for the ride at that point. Um, and the third problem is kind of similar in that the wheels are so close together when this weapon is spinning up, the, the chassis gets very skittish. There's not much control. There's not like, there's no, there's no drivability with it. Um, so um, to solve these problems, we came up with this, the Bloodsport V2 prototype chassis. And um, you'll, you'll see how this solves a, a, several of these problems. So for instance, in the front, uh, we have mounts for the forks and wedgelets. Um, with in the back, we actually extended the, the wheels. And what that does is if, if we get pushed upwards, the wheels still contact the ground so we can still maneuver backwards. Uh, rotate, do something to get out of a get out of a bad situation. Um, and thirdly, because these wheels are so far apart, so far out, we get a lot more maneuverability, more to more drive, especially when this thing is like spinning up. Uh, I think the Scorpio fight was a pretty good example of that. Um, being able to maneuver while things are spinning up and doing you know just crazy torques on the chassis and things like that. Um, so this, uh, so one one more thing, uh, the wheels. So we we made new wheels this year. So this is the Bloodsport V1 wheels. Um, they're Colsons. You can see they're they're they have decent grip, okay durability. But we had to screw in into the aluminum hub so these things wouldn't spin, um, which wasn't ideal. It's a little sketchy. So we came up with these wheels. Um, these, if you compare them, they're quite a bit different. They're much more much beefier. Um, we can adjust the durability or the durometer of these wheels so they can be either softer or harder depending on who we're fighting if we want more grip or more durability. Um, and yeah, so for the second big concept uh, that we were working on is the self riding pole. So here we got self riding pole. What's what's going on here is this kind of craziness, right? Like why is it curved? Um, so to explain this, I also have a gigabyte pole with me. Um, and what, what's, how does this work? So you have the chassis here, the ground here. So as this thing hits the ground, this is applying a big torque. It's, a, it's a basically a big lever and it's applying a giant torque. And as it goes up, the torque lessens and it topples itself back over. But at the very beginning, there's a huge, huge torque requirement. And that's bad for our bot because uh, our weapon system has four, four motors and they're all geared for speed. Um, we want to get that 250 mile per hour uh, tip tip speed limit and um, yeah if we lose one motor that's a lot of torque to be lost and uh, if we lose two motors that's a lot of torque to be lost so uh, we want to we want to be able to be redundant with all our systems and one way of doing that is using something like this so the idea here is we start upside down and we slowly move ourselves or kind of fling ourselves over and basically that Instead of a, a large torque spike and coming back down, we now have a much flatter torque requirement. And that makes it much easier for only two motors to uh, self write with instead of needing all four right at the beginning. And then, you know, the torque torque drops off quite fast. Um, and now for the third third big topic we were, uh, we've were we been working on, uh, I'm going to bring it over to Nick to talk to you about the weapon blades. Hey, I'm Nick. I do the weapon design for the team, and I also built Thumb War, our mini bot from last year. 
We have five blades for this season, each one designed for a different kind of fight. The tri-bar is our first and heaviest one, designed to deliver the biggest hits while still being fully stable. Next is the thick bar. This one is designed to survive vertical impacts, which is why we use it against endgame. That one also has a pair of stabilizer fins to help keep it level. Third, we have the disc. This one doubles as our top armor, with the rim protecting our bot from all sides even when it's not spinning, which is why we brought it out for the Scorpios match. After that, we have our two blades from last year. There's the key, which is our lightest weapon, but also the second thickest. We'd probably use this one against a compact drum spinner like Minotaur, where we don't need as much reach. Last but not least is the long bar that we used in all of our fights last year, which has the most reach and also the most aggressive tooth profile, making it good at digging into armor. We also added stabilizer fins to this one since last season. We're also doing a video series about each of these blades with more detail about the design, so be sure to check that out.